alligator bait. Alligator hunting was a very profitable business in the 18 and 1900s. The skins were used to make shoes, bags, belts, and other items. However, white hunters would often lose their arms and sometimes their lives as they rustled the swampy waters at night, attempting to attract alligators to the surface. So they decided to use slave babies as bait. This horrendous act was later characterized in sheet music, postcards, and figurines. Years later, a candy manufacturer of black licorice drops created a distasteful advertisement that featured a hungry-looking alligator leering at a bug-eyed black baby. The ad read, A Dainty Little Morsel. For decades, the popular candy was referred to as nigger babies. The same was, was said that it was a very popular candy just because of the nickname alone. The name was later changed to Nibs and is still on the market today. Picking any bait, also known as alligator bait, is the practice of using little black children as bait to catch alligators. The most complete account of how it was done is coming from the grandson of someone who said he used to do it. The slaves who had babies they would steal the babies during the course of the day, sometimes when their mothers weren't watching. Some would be infants, some would be a year old. He said some would even be toddlers. The man stated that they would grab these children and take them down to the swamp and leave them in pens like chicken coops. This would attract the alligators to come out. Then at night, they would go to the swamp, take these babies and tie them up. They would put a rope around their neck and around their torso. They would tie them tight so the babies would be screaming. At that point, they would throw the baby into the water and it would help churn the water and the alligators would come out quickly. The man stated that in a matter of minutes, the alligators were on them. He said the gators would clamp down the jaws on the child and as a matter of fact, once he clamped on them, the child was actually swallowed and you couldn't see anything but the rope. From there, the hunters would pull in the rope and would beat the alligator over the head with an ax. This was done over and over again throughout the night in order to catch the biggest alligators that weren't on the farms. The ones who were like seven, 800 pounds. Although many say that this never happened it happened for hundreds of years, well into the 20th century. The practice has been documented in at least three movies. The first one being Alligator Bait in the year 1900 and The Gator and the Piccaninny in 1900. And the story of two black boys who served as Alligator Bait was told in a movie called Untamed Fury in 1947. Indeed, the term Alligator Bait was common throughout the South from at least the 1860s and through the 1960s. It was a racial slur and threat among whites that was meant to domesticate black children. But by the 1940s in Harlem, New York, alligator bait was used to blacks of any age, particularly those from Florida. Finally, in terms from at least the 1890s to 1960s, Black children were often pictured as alligator bait, as toys for white children, soap dishes, toothbrushes, ashtrays, and especially on postcards sent throughout the U.S. mail. Now, to anyone who thinks I did this video to cause some kind of racial war or whatever on YouTube, that was not my reason for doing it. I believe it's history, and I believe that without knowing where we came from, we may revert back to it one day. And I know everybody would like to think that we are, as a society, morally correct. However, I, I don't really believe we are. And I believe that it only takes a few steps to get back to where we were. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Unless we forget history, we're bound to repeat it. Peace out.
Mahalo. Have a great day.